Hello, in today's video I'll be showing you where and how to lift a car or a truck on a variety of vehicles. It is a very important step when it comes to working on your own car, like removing your wheel to do brakes, oil changes, starters, and so much more. Safety is key. Most vehicles will come with a cheap jack like these, but I would never trust one if I had a choice. So when working on your own car, getting a jack is a very important first step but I would never fully rely on it by itself, which is why you want to get a set of jack stands to go with it. The first and most important step is always setting the parking brake and making sure your vehicle is in park. And like I said, safety is key. So if you have wheel chocks, you want to place one in front of the wheel and one behind the wheel. If you're lifting the rear, you want to place them on the front wheel. And if you're lifting the front, you want to place them on the rear wheels. And if you don't have wheel chocks, a 2x4 works good as well. Here we got a 2013 Chevy Malibu. When we want to lift the front, we focus on the pinch weld area, which is this area here. But we want our jack to sit with this notch in the middle of the cup. These are actually good areas where you would want to place a jack stand. But when you have no better choice to lift from, like on this vehicle, you need to find a different location to place them. You will notice that there won't be enough room for both in this small area. So this video will also help you find a place to put your jack stand. And the same goes for when you're lifting the rear half of the car. The pinch weld lifting area for the rear begins here, and you want the notch of the pinch weld to sit in the middle of the jack's cup. This is the jack's cup, and you want the pinch weld to sit in the middle of the cup with the raised areas to be able to grab onto the pinch weld if the jack begins to slide back as you lift it. You will notice for low profile jacks they don't have much of a raised area, which makes it easier to fit into low vehicles. And now to begin lifting the vehicle, and as I said earlier you want the cup to sit in the middle of the notch. Just like that with the edges of the cup surrounding the pinch weld so that it doesn't slide off. Now that we got it lifted we need to find a place to support it with a jack stand. You might think this area looks strong enough but it's pretty hollow and thin. And if you lifted it or lowered it onto the jack stand it'd probably bend it. I like to tap it you want there to be a solid sound not a hollow sound. Just like on here on this frame area where you got a few layers overlapping each other feel strong enough. One important thing you want to look for wherever you lift the car or place a jack stand, you want to make sure there's no brake line or fuel line that you may pinch or damage. But if you don't have something similar on your vehicle, you can place a jack stand under the subframe structure, which is basically a cradle where the engine and transmission are mounted to. This is a strong structure made of heavy gauge metal which can safely support the weight of the vehicle. Just make sure to avoid placing the jack or jack stand under any engine or transmission component. You can notice the subframe structure running from the driver's side to the passenger side, up to the front. Let's hop on to lifting the rear. You may wonder why not place the jack stand further alongside the pinch weld, but if you notice it has a lip, which will definitely bend if you lower the weight of the car onto it. So this is definitely a big no-no. Instead I place the jack stand on the rear suspension subframe, which runs alongside the driver's side to the passenger side. So when you go to lower the weight of the vehicle onto the jack stand, I like to leave some of the weight on the jack as well, so they both support it together. Here are more examples of other vehicles. Since they're not all built the same, hopefully they can help you with most any other van, SUV, or car. Hondas and Toyotas have these extended sections that stick down below the pinch weld, while others have notches kind of to guide you where to lift from. Now that we got a pretty good idea where we can lift the car from, I'm going to show you how it differs from a truck. Here we got a Chevy Colorado. 
and when you look under you will notice that these trucks have a full frame underneath and this frame makes a good lifting point but when it comes to lifting you want to pick a spot closer to the wheel because if you lift from mid truck it'll become off balance lifting the front and the rear together teetering back and forth another advantage with trucks is that they have a good cross member which is a section of frame in the middle which allows you to lift both front wheels together When you're lifting, you always want to make sure that the cup of the jack stays in position and doesn't start sliding off. And when it comes to placing the jack stands, you just place them along the frame, one on each side. And you want to make sure that they stay centered along the frame. And now we just lower the truck onto the jack stands leaving some weight on the jack as well. And this is how you want your jack stands to sit. Sitting evenly holding the weight in the middle. And now to focus on lifting the rear. We can use the frame on both sides or we can actually lift the truck from the rear end to lift both wheels at the same time. The reason this rear end works good is because it has a flat spot on the bottom. It protects the rear cover from getting damaged when you lift it. If you're lifting a truck that doesn't have that, you want to be careful. You may damage the rear cover and it may start leaking. Here's a good view of how the jack isn't touching the rear cover, so it'll be safe from being damaged. And when you're placing a jack stand on the rear frame, you want to be careful to avoid pinching any lines or cables. Another good place to put jack stands are on the rear end axle tubes. I use them often because the axle tube sits nicely onto the jack stand. But if you don't decide to use those lifting points, here's where you'd want to lift if you're just trying to get one wheel off the floor, using the frame just behind the wheel. Here you will notice how the jack begins to slide back, but it's still holding onto the frame, but just shows how you always want to keep an eye on it. And here you can place a jack set right next to the jack. There's plenty of space for it. I hope you were able to find this video helpful and informative. Please press that like button, it helps support my channel and my video. And don't forget to subscribe.